I couldn't turn on my national public broadcast during the new year without hearing terms like dry January and my favorite, sober curious. I welcome the discussion as alcohol is still the most widely abused substance in the world. From 2016 to 2017, 3,000 more Canadians were hospitalized due to alcohol compared to those hospitalized with ACS. And that doesn't even include patients who were discharged from the emergency department. In the U.S., alcohol is the third leading preventable cause of death. And at a global level in 2012, over 3.3 million deaths were directly due to alcohol. 3.3 million. That is more than the population of Chicago dead due to alcohol. I was shocked when I was listening to a call-in show that focused on the inability of those with alcohol use disorder to access evidence-based treatment. My uneasiness grew as I heard stories about primary care and emergency physicians actually refusing to prescribe anti-craving medications. These medications are safe, effective, and there is no reason why we as emergency physicians should be refusing to prescribe them. Last month, I saw a 37-year-old in the ED after she passed out in a snowbank. She was very intoxicated, and I kept her in the ED long enough to have a conversation with her before she left. On further history, she told me that she was drinking in a binge pattern, 1.5 liters of wine a day for five days in a row, every two weeks. She had never experienced withdrawal symptoms beyond a slight tremor, but her life had fallen apart due to her drinking, and she was at rock bottom. Counseling in AA had been helpful, but she kept relapsing. I asked if anyone had ever offered her anti-craving medication, and she looked at me blankly and said, what? I have no idea what you're talking about. I wrote her a script for naltrexone, 50 milligrams OD times two weeks, and arranged a follow-up appointment in the outpatient clinic. She has been doing well and has not had a drink in six weeks. This patient had presented to the ED seven times in the past six months for alcohol intoxication, sees her family doctor on a monthly basis, but never once had she been offered an anti-craving medication. Looking at the data, she is not alone. In general, less than 9% of patients with alcohol use disorder are ever offered an anti-craving medication. In Ontario, where I practice, it's even worse. Less than 1% of adults with alcohol use disorder are ever prescribed these medications, and it's not a cost issue. These medications are covered by social assistance programs. Naltrexone is first-line treatment for alcohol use disorder. The starting dose of naltrexone is 50 milligrams once a day. It has a number needed to treat of only 12 to prevent returning to heavy drinking and 20 to prevent any drinking. To remind you that NNT is fantastic compared to the NNT for ASA in STEMI to prevent mortality, which is 42. The main side effect of naltrexone is GI upset, and it's contraindicated in patients who take opioids as it's an opioid antagonist, or in those whose LFTs are three times the upper limits of normal. Naltrexone works on the reward circuits in the brain by blocking the effect of endogenous opioids that are released in anticipation of drinking, or when alcohol is consumed. It's not a magic pill, but when combined with psychosocial support, it can be just what someone needs to reach their goal of abstinence or reduction in drinking. Let's say my patient's LFTs were way out of whack. What then? Luckily, we have another option, acamprosate, but compliance is an issue as it is dosed as 666 milligrams TID. Next time you see someone in the ED intoxicated or in withdrawal, try to resist the common order of discharge when awake, alert, and ambulatory. Not only are you going to miss an opportunity for brief intervention and referral to addiction services, but you will also miss the opportunity of starting patients on an anti-craving medication that is safe, effective, and should be barrier-free. Don't forget to arrange follow-up with Addiction Medicine Clinic or ask them to see their primary care provider as altrexone should be continued for up to 12 months. You may say this is not in your wheelhouse, that this medication should be prescribed by addiction medicine specialists. I encourage you to re-examine those thoughts and then promptly discard them. The emergency department is often the first or most frequent point of contact for many of these patients, and we can make a big difference here. For any alcohol misuse patient you see in the ED, I think it's worth taking a couple of minutes to ask them if they're interested in quitting, and if they're motivated to quit, and you can get them follow-up. Go ahead and write up a script for naltrexone 50 milligrams daily for a couple of weeks. 
Just make sure you confirm that they aren't taking opioids and that they don't have severe liver disease. If they do have severe liver disease, try a campersate. For every dozen or so patients you do this with, one is likely to decrease their drinking enough to regain control of their lives and maybe prevent future ED visits for alcohol-related problems.